Chapter 3B, Section 3.3, we're going to look at nuclear fusion and nuclear fission reactions, define a half-life, and demonstrate the ability to perform half-life calculations. So nuclear fission, and I always like to think that fission is division, in which a neutron bombards a heavy nucleus and causes it to split or divide. And then after it splits, it gives off more neutrons which can then bombard other heavy uranium isotopes, causing them to split as well. And notice that in this scenario, we can end up with, with, with what's known as a chain reaction. Nuclear fusion is where you have two very light isotopes, light in mass, in which they come together to create a heavier isotope and gives off a lot of energy, and this is typically found in the sun, nuclear fusion. Half-life of a radioisotope is the time it takes for half of the unstable nuclei present to decay, meaning half of the isotope becomes stable and the other half remains unstable. So for an example, we have phosphorus with a mass of 32, atomic number 15, and notice that at day zero, 100% is considered unstable. However, after its half-life of 14 days, 50% remains unstable, while the other 50% has decayed into a more stable sulfur isotope. When we say unstable, we mean it's still emitting alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Then notice another half-life occurs from 14 to 28 days, and now our sample is still unstable by 25%. And then the next half-life occurs another 14 days later, and we're left with 12.5% still unstable while the rest is stable. So different isotopes have a different half-life. The shorter the half-life, the safer it is. So shorter half-lives are safer, whereas when it has a very long half-life, like uranium-235, 700 million years, this long half-life means it'll be giving off radiation in order to stabilize for 700 million years and that's just to stabilize by 50 percent so long half-lives are more dangerous so as this sample of iodine which is giving off alpha beta and gamma radiation begins to stabilize after the first half-life occurs we have 50 percent that is still unstable so we had 100% before, now we have 50%. In this next one, we're down to 25%, still unstable. And then we move down to 12.5%, still unstable. And then one more, this has 6.25% that remains unstable. So after four half-lives occur, we are left with 6.25% still unstable and giving off alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So let's do some problems. After 20 days, a 120 kilogram sample of bismuth, 210, decays down to just 7.5 kilograms. What is its half-life? It should be important to note that there are five parts to this. We have an original amount, we have a final amount, we have a half-life, which is the amount of time it takes, for the isotope to stabilize by half, and then we have what's known as the total time. Something that is not provided for us is the number of half-lives that will occur in this particular problem. And so I wanna find what I have after 20 days, so that's gonna be my total time. You have a 120 kilogram sample, and that's the original amount and they tell you that it's gonna decay down to 7.5 kilograms, which is our final amount. So what is the half-life? We don't know. Notice that the amounts will always go together and the times, half-life and total time, will always go together. The first thing we always have to do is determine the number of half-lives. And we're gonna to have to either use both times or both amounts. Since we don't have the half-life time, 
We're not going to be able to use the times in order to accomplish this. So we're going to use the amounts. I'm going to take my original amount, 120, and I'm going to divide it by 2 until I reach 7.5 kilograms. So 120 divided by 2 is 60, and then in half makes that 30. Cut this in half to 15, and 15 cut in half equals 7.5. So notice that 1, 2, 3, 4 half-lives occurred to get from 120 kilograms down to 7.5 kilograms. So if the total time, that means the time it took to go from here to here to here to here, all of that together should equal the total time, which is 20 days. So I could just take the 20 divided by the 4, and that's going to tell me that we have a half-life equal to 5 days. We can check this because each time this cut in half, five days elapsed, and so we have five plus five plus five plus five, all equaling 20, which is my total time. How long does it take a 100 gram sample of gold 198 to decay to 6.25 grams if the half-life is 2.69 days? So we have an original amount, a final amount, the half-life, the total time, and then the number of half-lives that will occur. I have an original amount of 100 grams. I have a final amount of 6.25 grams. And we know the half-life is 2.69 days. So we want to find out what is the total time in days. The first thing we have to figure out, though, is how many half-lives occurred. So we have to take our amounts, because we can't use the times, we're going to take our amounts and we're going to cut the original amount in half until it reaches 6.25. So we'll go 50, then 25, then 12.5, then 6.25. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4 half-lives occur. Each time the sample cut in half, 2.69 days elapsed, which is our half-life. So each of these represents 2.69 days. That being said, we simply need to add them all up in order to know what the total time is. Or we could just take 2.69 times 4, and that's going to equal 10.76 days. Okay, we have our original amount final amount, half-life, total time, and the number of half-lives which occur. We are given 60 grams that will decay to 7.59 grams. We have a half-life of 5.27 years. And what is the total time? Oh, that we're being asked, and we're being asked how many half-lives have passed. So while we don't know the total time, we really are trying to determine this, how many half-lives have occurred. So we will determine that by taking our samples, our amounts, and cutting them in half until we reach the final amount. So we get 30, 15, and 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. Though it's not exactly 7.59, we can approximate and state that approximately three half-lives have occurred. That would be our answer. H3 tritium is an artificially produced radioisotope using some nuclear reactions. How much of a one kilogram sample, so that's my original amount, remains undecayed, so I don't know my final amount, after After 85.82 years has elapsed, and we have a half-life of 12.32 years. And so what I don't know at the moment is how many half-lives have occurred. I cannot use the amounts this time because I don't know my final amount. So we're going to use the times. We have the half-life and the total time. If we take the total time divided by the half-life, that's going to equal the number of half-lives. 
This means that I will take this sample and cut it in half seven times. So we'll get 0 0.5, then 0 0.25, then 0.125, Zero point zero six two five zero point zero three one two five zero point zero one five six where we get zero point zero zero seven eight one and that's kilograms. So note here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half lives in our calculation. So a couple more examples. Here we would do 100 grams. What is the final amount left over? If the half-life is 2.70 days, the total time is 8.10 days. And so I will take my 8.10 divided by 2.70 and that's going to get me three half-lives that occur. So this will cut in half three times. One, two, three. This would become 50. This would become 25 and my final answer would be 12.5 grams. Here, my sample starts out as 50.0 grams. I end up at 12.5 grams, and the total time in which this occurs is 14 seconds. So the question is, how much is the individual half-life time? I need to know the number of half-lives that occur, so how many times did this sample cut in half to get from 50 to 12.5? First time it became 25, second time it became 12.5. So we had two half-lives occur. 14.4 divided by the two is going to equal my half-life, which is 7.2 seconds. We'll do one more example. Here I'm given 750 grams as the original sample. We want to know how much is left after a total time of 62.0 hours if the half-life is 12.4 hours. And so to determine the number of half-lives, I need to do my 62 divided by the 12.4, and that's going to equal my number of half-lives, which is 5. That means I'm going to cut this sample in half five times until it reaches my final amount, which is 23.45 grams.